Good morning. We welcome you to the Easter sunrise service at Salina First Presbyterian Church. We invite you to take a moment to do two things for us. First, this worship service is streaming live on Facebook Live, and we encourage you to share that post on your own personal feeds so that more people can join us in worship this morning. Second, we encourage everyone to download a bulletin so you can follow along with the order of worship and respond with the bold parts. That is located on our website, fpcsalina.org, under the Sunday Worship Central section. While you're doing those things, I'll tell you a little bit more about what to expect in this Easter sunrise service. This morning's sunrise service is almost assuredly different from any that you've seen before at Salina First Presbyterian Church. We'll take a journey from darkness to light, both in terms of the lighting of this space and also in terms of the journey into the season of Easter. You will see candles in this service. This candle is the Christ candle or Paschal candle, and that will represent the light of Jesus Christ. These candles here represent you, represent those that are worshiping with us, represent Charlie and I as well. And you will see us later on in this service, once the Christ candle is lit, that we will light these candles using the light of the Christ candle. And this symbolizes how the light of Christ lives inside each of us. And we invite you to participate as well, whether you have candles or a flashlight or anything else that symbolizes the light of Christ for you. Feel free to take a picture of yourself and to post it as a comment on our Facebook feed so that we can see as a community, even though we're not gathered here today, how the light of Christ is being shared among us in this virtual community. Our worship will move from a service of light to a service of readings of scripture to a service of baptism, to a service of thanksgiving. Through it all, we invite you to allow scripture, song, prayer, even silence, to illuminate your hearts and souls as we celebrate and give thanks for the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how his victory over death is our victory too. One last note, at 10 o'clock this morning, we will air the Presbyterian Church USA's denomination-wide worship service that will be on KINA radio as well as streaming on our social media pages. Let us begin our Easter sunrise service of worship. I invite you to follow along in your bulletins, responding verbally with the bolded words. Grace and peace from Jesus Christ our Lord and also with you, beloved people of God, on this most holy dawn when our Savior Jesus Christ passed from death to life, we gather with the church throughout the world in vigil and in prayer. This is the Passover of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through light and the word, through water, bread, and wine, we proclaim Christ's death and resurrection. We share Christ's triumph over sin and death, and we await Christ's coming again in glory. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The life of Christ is the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. Eternal God, in Jesus Christ, you've given the light of life to all the world. Bless this new, fi new fire and kindle in us the desire to shine with the brightness of Christ's rising until we feast at the banquet of eternal light through Jesus Christ, the Son of Righteousness our Lord. Amen. The light of Christ rises in glory, casting out the shadow of sin and death. symbolizing the joining of all God's people as lights of the world. The light of Christ, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. The light of Christ, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. The light of Christ, thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. The light of Christ, thanks be to God.
the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. We now move to our Easter proclamation section of the worship service. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Exalt all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Sound the trumpet of salvation. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in the brightness of your King. Christ has conquered. Glory fills you. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, Rejoice heavenly powers. powers. Sing, Sing choirs of angels. of angels. Jesus Christ, our Lord, King, is risen. Rejoice, O Mother Church. Exult in glory. The risen Savior shines upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. Rejoice, Rejoice heavenly, heavenly powers. Peace. Sing, Sing choirs, choirs of angels. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our King, King is, is risen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that with full devotion of heart and mind and voice, we should praise the invisible God and the only Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who by his precious blood redeemed us from the bondage of, to the ancient sin. For this is indeed the Paschal Feast, in which the true Lamb is slain, by whose blood the doorposts of the faithful are made holy. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our Lord, is risen. This is the night in which, in ancient times, you delivered our forebears, the children of Israel, and led them dry-shod through the sea. This is the night in which the darkness of sin has been purged away by the rising brightness. This is the night in which all who believe in Christ are rescued from evil and gloom of sin, are renewed in grace, and are restored in holiness. This is the night in which breaking the chains of death, Christ arises from hell in triumph. O night truly blessed, which alone was worthy to know the time and hour in which Christ rose again from hell. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. This is the night of which it is written, the night is as clear as the day, and then shall my night be turned into day. The, lonely, the holiness of this night puts to flight the deeds of wickedness, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, and joy to those who mourn. Casts out, casts out hate, brings peace, and humbles earthly pride. Rejoice heavenly powers, sing choirs of angels. Jesus Christ our King is risen. Therefore, in this night of grace, receive, O God, our praise and thanksgiving for the light of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, reflected in the burning of this candle. We sing the glories of this pillar of fire, the brightness of which is not diminished even when its light is divided and borrowed, for it is fed by the melting wax which the bees, your servants, have made for the substance of this candle. This is the night in which heaven and earth are joined, things human and things divine, we therefore pray to you, O God, that this candle, burning to the honor of your name, will continue to vanquish the darkness of night and be mingled with the lights of heaven. May Christ the morning star find it burning, that morning star who never sets, that morning star who, rising from the grave, faithfully sheds light on the whole human race. And we pray, O God, rule, govern, and preserve with your continual protection your whole church giving us peace in this time of our paschal rejoicing through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Rejoice, Rejoice heavenly powers. powers. Sing, Sing choirs of angels. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. As we begin our service of readings, let us pray for illumination. Lo li living God, with joy we celebrate the presence of your risen word. Enliven our hearts by your Holy Spirit so that we may proclaim the good news of eternal and abundant life. This we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first reading comes from Genesis, the creation story. In the beginning, when God created the heaven and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening, and there was morning the second day. And God said, let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bears fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which water, the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters and the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God in, created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of the earth and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have, been, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. 
Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it because on it, God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth when they were created. A reading from Psalm 136, verses 1 through 9 and 23 through 26. Listen as the psalmist praises God for God's work of creation. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who alone does great wonders, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who by understanding made the heavens, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who spread out the earth on the waters, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who made the great lights, for his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, for his steadfast love endures forever. The moon and the stars to rule over the night, for his steadfast love endures forever. It is he who remembered us in our low estate, for his steadfast love endures forever, and rescued us from our foes, for his steadfast love endures forever, who gives food to all flesh, for his steadfast love endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven, for his steadfast love endures forever. We invite you to take a moment for silent reflection on God's steadfast love shown in creation. Let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord who is so kind, for God's mercy shall endure, ever faithful, ever sure. God with all commanding might filled the new made world with light. For God's mercy shall endure, ever faithful, ever sure. All things living God does feed, with full measure meets their need. For God's mercy shall endure, ever faithful, ever sure. Let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord who is so kind. For God's mercy shall endure, ever faithful, ever sure. Let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you created all things in wonderful beauty and order. Help us now to perceive how still more wonderful it is that this new creation, by which in the fullness of time you redeemed your people, through the sacrifice of our Passover, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Now, a second set of Old Testament readings. These come from the 14th and 15th chapters of Exodus and speak of God's deliverance of the people of Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. Listen now to Exodus 14, 10 through 31. <clears throat> As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back, and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. 
In great fear, the Israelites called out to the Lord. They said to Moses, Was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians? For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward, but lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers." The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there in the darkness, and it lit up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched his hand out over the sea, and the Lord drove back the sea by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land, and the waters were divided. The Israelites went into the sea on dry ground, the waters forming a wall for them on their left and on their right. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers. At the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the Israelites, for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and their chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at the dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. As the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered their chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them to the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. And thus the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord had done against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Continuing reading Exodus 15. Then the prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand, and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. Horse and rider he has thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my might, and he has become my salvation. This is my God, and I will praise him. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he cast into the sea. He picked officers. His picked officers were sunk in the Red Sea. The floods covered them. They went down into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. Who is like you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in splendor, doing wonders? You stretched out your right hand. The earth swallowed them. 
In your steadfast love, you led the people whom you redeemed. You guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You brought them in and planted them on the mountain of your own possession, the place, O Lord, that you made your abode, the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hands have established. The Lord will reign forever and ever. We invite you to take a moment for silent reflection on God's steadfast love shown in delivering Israel from bondage to the Egyptians. Come, ye faithful, raise the strain of triumphant gladness. God has brought forth Israel into joy from sadness. Loose from Pharaoh's bitter yoke, Jacob's sons and daughters, led them with unmoistened foot through the Red Sea waters. Tis the spring of souls today, Christ has burst his prison, and from three days sleep in death as a sun has risen. All the winter of our sins, long and dark is flying. From the light to which we give, Lord, and praise undying. And let us pray. God of steadfast love, your wonderful deeds of old shine forth even to our own day. Through the waters of the sea, you once delivered your chosen people from slavery, a sign for us of the salvation of all nations through the grace of baptism. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may be numbered among the offspring of Abraham and rejoice in the inheritance of Israel. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our third and final set of Old Testament readings this morning comes from the prophecies found in the book of Isaiah and speak of God's free gift of salvation. Listen now for God's word to you in Isaiah 55, the first 11 verses. Ho, oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and a commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know. And nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, 
but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. Once again, reading from Isaiah, this time, chapter 12, verses 2 through 6. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, Give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known his deeds among the nations, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout aloud and sing for joy, O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. We invite you to take a moment for silent reflection on God's free gift of salvation. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and God will be my Savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing. From the springs of salvation, and on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord, and call upon God's name. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and God will be my Savior. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, bring out your joy for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust and not be afraid, for the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and God will be my Savior. Let us pray. Eternal God, by the power of your word, you created all things, and by your spirit, you renew the earth. Give now the water of life to all who thirst for you, and nourish with the spiritual food of bread and wine all who hunger for you, that our lives may bear the abundant fruit of your heavenly reign. Through Jesus Christ, the firstborn of the dead, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And let us pray. Eternal giver of life and light, this holy night shines with the radiance of the risen Christ. Renew your church with the spirit given to us in baptism, that we may worship you in sincerity and truth, and shine as a light in the world. This we pray 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Hear these words from Romans, the sixth chapter. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will most certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. A reading from John's Gospel, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18. I invite you to open your whole self, body, mind, heart, and soul to this word. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have taken him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary, Mary stood, weeping, outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid them. When she had said this, She turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbanai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them what he had said and the things that he had said to her. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. We know that Christ is raised and dies no more. Embraced by death, he broke its fearful hold. 
Reborn we share with him an Easter life. Alleluia. We share by water in his saving death. Reborn we share with him an Easter life. As living members of a living Christ, Alleluia! The Father's splendor clothes the Son with life. The Spirit's power shakes the Church of God. Baptized we live with God, the three in one. Alleluia! A new creation comes to life and grows as Christ's new body takes on flesh and blood. The universe restored and whole will sing. Alleluia. Hear these words from Holy Scripture. Just as the body is one and has many members, and all members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. Beloved people of God, our baptism is the sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and of our being grafted into Christ. Through the, through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ, the power of sin was broken and God's kingdom entered into our world. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. Let us therefore celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal of the promises made at our own baptisms. I ask you therefore once again to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we were baptized. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? I do. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? I will with God's help. Let us therefore, with the whole church, confess our faith using the ancient Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, remember your baptisms and be thankful in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of grace. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of peace. 
Come to the table of peace. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of peace. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of love. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of love. Come to the table of hope. Come to the table of hope. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of hope. Come to the table of joy. Come to the table of joy. This is God's table, it's not yours or mine. Come to the table of joy. Come. And we do, friends, come to this table. This service that we have this morning is based off the Easter Vigil service from our denomination's Book of Common Worship. In that service, this would be the time when we would celebrate the sacrament of communion together. And as we put this worship service together, we tried to think of ways that we could incorporate the essence of communion in a way that that did not require us to be physically together. All sacraments involve actions of some sort that embody the grace that we experience through Jesus Christ. So we would need an action that embodies God's grace somehow. Eucharist is another word that we use for communion. Eucharist comes from the Greek word for thanksgiving. So any communion parallel would need to have elements of thanksgiving. When we review the words that Jesus spoke at the Last Supper, we hear, do this in remembrance of me. So our action needs to remember Jesus. In 1 Corinthians 11:26, the Apostle Paul writes, For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And finally, communion unites us. So we need to incorporate unity into the action that we take, unity with Christ, unity with one another, even though we are not physically united. Until that wonderful day that we are able to gather together again and celebrate the joyful feast of the Lord together, let us find our own ways to give thanks for God's grace through Christ, to remember Christ's sacrifice, and to offer our own sacrifice of praise, thanksgiving, and service to God and neighbor, united with Christ and with one another, even in this time when we cannot physically be together. I invite you to think of ways that you can do this, to share them with us, either by email or on our social media feed, so that we can share them as a community and see how we, as the body of Christ, are celebrating communion in our own ways in this special time, a special time when God is still very present with us. Let us now participate in a litany of thanksgiving. According to the prophet Isaiah, the day is coming when the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food and well-aged wines. On that day, the Lord will destroy the shroud of death that is cast over the whole earth. God will take away the disgrace of the people and wipe away the tears from all faces. God will swallow up death forever. This, this is, is the, the day, day of, of resurrection. resurrection. This, this is, is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let, let us, us be glad, glad and rejoice in our salvation. salvation. And let us pray. Gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. We remember and we have remembered your mighty acts in holy history. 
We have seen your power in sending light to conquer darkness, water to give us life, and the bread of heaven to nourish us in love. Send us out now with the good news of salvation and a message of joy for all the world in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We now invite you to join in singing the hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today, and you will be joined in doing so by recording from our own, very own sanctuary with the choir, the musicians, and the congregation in this place for last year's Easter service. Let us proclaim with joy that Jesus Christ is indeed risen today. following our blessing and charge, we will play a recording from the end of last year's Easter service at our church, Handel's Hallelujah Chorus. Now please receive this blessing and charge, responding aloud on the bolded words in your bulletins. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the power of his resurrection. Amen. Christ is risen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 